We all have certain shows and franchises that have left their mark in us growing up. For me, the most beloved, iconic, important show that shaped my way through some confusing and difficult times was Digimon. I still to this day love Digimon and I wanted to talk more about it in this channel. So I thought a good start would be a Digimon tag. So the closest thing I found to a Digimon tag in English online was an old 30 day Digimon challenge I had once come across on Tumblr. So I took it, narrowed down the questions to 20 and included most of my favorite ones, adding a couple of more of my own. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan Valentine and today we are doing the Digimon tag. I have the questions here on my notebook, so let's start. Question number one. How old were you when you first discovered Digimon? So I came across Digimon when I was around 10, 11 years old. I was finishing elementary school at the time and I remember I was quick to discard it at first as a Pokemon ripoff, which is ironic because I ended up one of the most obsessed Digimon fans ever. <laughs> I was not really willing to give it a chance until I watched an episode on TV. It was through kind of the end of the first run through of Digimon Adventure on Greek TV. And I stumbled upon one of these really, really dark and existential episodes that uh, take place around the end of the series. And it was well in the plot. It was really dark and really like deep. So I was really impressed with that. And I thought, that's something completely different than Pokemon. I need to give it a chance and I need to watch it from scratch. So I did. Question number two, what is your favorite season? My favorite seasons <laughs> are Digimon Adventure and Digimon Adventure Zero Two. I love them both equally. I cannot pick one. I think that they are both part of the same narrative and focus around the same characters, and so I love them both. <laughs> Question number three, what is your favorite digital monster? My favorite digital monster is Angeomon. Question number four, which Digivice do you like best? I would say that the three Digivices from Digimon Adventure 02 are my favorite ones. It was the first time that each Digivice had its own color to match the personality and the Digimon partner of the Digidestined that had it. And also because the three Digivices were opening up the gate to the digital world from any computer. So I think I love them the most. Question number five, what crest would you have? I would have the crest of light. Question number six, what Digimon would you like as your partner? I added a bonus to that question to go through the Digivolution line of your partner as well. So obviously my Digimon partner would be Tailmon and I think she would turn into Nefertimon for sure with the Digimental of Light and she would also have the second evolution path to Angegomon and then Ophanimon. I quite like Ophanimon fall down mode as well. Maybe there would be like a special circumstance in which my Tailmon would evolve to Ophanimon fall down mode. She has a scythe and she is dark and stuff and I'm a goth so yeah. So next is question number seven. Which is your favorite Digidestin? My favorite Digidestin is Hikari Yagami or Karigamiya. I always thought she was really cool from the first season when she went up Myotis Moon to defend Tail Moon and all the way through Digimon Zero Two when she joins the second group of Digidestined in their adventure. And I always really identified with her personality because she was quite introverted but also very mentally strong. And that was something I felt really connected to. Question number eight, what is your favorite couple? As an extension to the previous question, my favorite couple is Kari with TK because they have matching Digimon, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they are the best couple. It's not technically a canon, but I ship it. It's my favorite one. Shout out to the cool Takari scenes in Digimon Try because they made me happy. Question number nine, what is your favorite friendship? I think my favorite friendship in the whole show is that of Tai with Izzy because they're so different from each other. Like Tai is a very hot-headed person that just runs up to each challenge and doesn't think very much, at least, you know, when he was little. And then Izzy is always calculating, always thinking, always analyzing. And they are such a contrasting pair 
but they really show their appreciation and their care for each other in many occasions. I think they help each other grow and take each other out of their comfort zones and that's why I think this friendship is my favorite one. Number 10, who is your Digidestant crush? Ha! <laughs> Digimon husbandos <laughs> or waifus. My Digidestant crush is Tai. It didn't start out that way. My first ever Digimon crush was Ken from Digimon Zero Two. I was really in love with Ken for a while and then I grew out of it. I think I grew out of it by the end of Zero Two and I switched to Tai because reasons. So yeah, Tai is my Digimon husband though. Number 11, a favorite Digivolution moment scene. I added this question because I think that there are so many iconic scenes tied to Digivolutions in the show. For me personally, I would... Um, it's so hard to pick. I think, apart from the first time Tailmon turns into a Gegomon, I think the Pyldromon DNA Digivolution moment is quite iconic for me. And also the Silphimon one, when Hikari gets to DNA Digivolve with Yulei. That's another one that gives me goosebumps to date, <laughs> even if I watch it now. Number 12. A moment that makes you cry. I have two moments that make me cry every time I rewatch them. I can't pick one. I have to say both of them because they have the same impact on me. The first moment is when Wizardmon sacrifices himself to protect Tailmon and Kari in Digimon Adventure. That is a very, very heartbreaking scene for me. And especially the last words between Tailmon and Wizardmon are always like making me tear up like crazy. <laughs> And uh, the second moment is from Digimon Zero Two, and it's Wormon's death, and generally Ken's redemption arc, and like Ken seeing Wormon die and realizing his mistakes. This is the moment that makes me feel like I want to tear up my insides. So I cry a lot when I rewatch that episode. On a happier note, question number thirteen. Your favorite funny moment? There are again a lot of funny moments that I really love from Digimon. Again, I think I'm gonna go with two moments. I'm gonna go with one from Digimon Zero Two and a more recent one from Digimon Try. So uh, the first one um, from Digimon Adventure Zero Two is from this episode that everyone pretends to go to summer camp with Tai, Matt and Easy and Matt's dad so that the new Digidestin team can spend a few days in the digital world in order to defeat the Digimon Emperor once and for all. And Davis's sister, June, follows Matt to the camp uninvited because she has a crush on him. And I think the funniest bit is when she arrives, Tai, Easy and Matt are there and the new Digidestin are not because they're obviously in the digital world trying to defeat the Digimon Emperor. So she's asking, where is everyone? The funny bit is seeing Tai, Matt and Easy trying to make an excuse and all three of them are really awkward and I think their faces, their voices, the things they're saying both in Japanese and in Greek are ridiculous. So that's one of my favorite funny moments for sure. And then the next one is the knife of ramen try moment in the first movie when Matt reveals his band's new name to Tai. <laughs> the name is Knife of Day, which is again ridiculous. Tai makes fun of him and calls him Knife of Ramen. <laughs> And I think that's really funny. Question number 14. Who do you think wore the goggles best? Who do you think? Seriously though, I want to give Davis a bit of credit as well because from all the leaders he is the person that shows a lot of like character growth from how he started in the start of the series and I think especially because of his friendship with Ken and the things he goes through, he matures a lot by the end of it so I think he's quite a responsible leader like Tai is definitely number one but Davis also does a good job and I think he's underrated as a character. Question number 15. Who do you think is the most iconic Digimon villain? For me, it's Myotismon. He's the focal villain of the arc when the Digidestin go back to Earth, which is one of my favorite 
favorite favorite bits of Digimon Adventure. I really enjoy these episodes in Tokyo. Trying to find the eighth Digidestined child is one of the most important arcs for me. We see him digivolve to something much more horrifying that pushes everyone to their limits and then he's present during the second series as well. So I think he's the main iconic villain for me that I think of straight away when I think of the Digimon story. Question 16. Who is your personal favorite villain? My personal favorite villain is Black War Greymon. I think the way he came to be and his personal resolve to understand why he was born has a very existential meaning and he's quite a deep and difficult character to understand. He was one of my favorite characters and definitely my favorite villain. Question number 17, English or Japanese names? Welcome to this massive subject of sub over dub. In my case, I grew up in Greece, so we had a Greek dub. The Greek dub was directly translated from Japanese. So the soundtrack and the dialogues were following the Japanese kind of format, not the English one. You may also have noticed that I'm using the English names a lot during this video, like Davies and Tai and Easy and Kari and TK, but I'm also calling Tailmon Tailmon and not Gatamon. This is because in the Greek dub, in order to localize, I guess, the kids' names, they used the American names and most of the Digimon were called by their Japanese names. It's a bit confusing, I know, but I grew up with this kind of hybrid between, you know, the Western names and the Japanese content of the show. So I feel like, for me, the sub is what feels closer to what I know as Digimon because it's based off the original. The American translation had a lot of Pans was very much more child-friendly than the Japanese version and I didn't particularly like that. I remember the first time I came across an American episode when I first got a computer and I was looking for Digimon stuff on the internet and I was so disappointed to see that they have changed the music for everything because the Digimon soundtrack was absolutely core to why I love Digimon so much and I was insulted that the music was changed and I felt like I couldn't recognize, you know, the characters anymore with all these like attempts for jokes and making it more child friendly. So for me, the Japanese version is what I prefer. When it comes to the names, I don't mind. I can use both Japanese or English names for the characters, although I will always call Tailmon Tailmon. I'm never gonna call her Gatumon. I have established that. Question 18. Do you own any Digimon games? Wait. So I have two Digimon games for the PS4. I didn't grow up with a gaming console in my house, unfortunately. I know it's a bit rare to find a person that didn't have any games growing up. I was always aware of the games through the online Digimon community. And the first Digimon game I ever played was Digimon Masters Online. I had spent a lot of time with it in my first year of university and a couple of years ago we finally got a PS4 for the flat and the first game I went to buy was this one which is Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth and after that I also got Digimon World Next Order so they're both very different kind of in mechanics and in the way that they work. Between the two I'm better at this one. I feel the story series is more for me. I have yet to master playing Digimon World, but I want to, and I'm looking forward to more Digimon games for the PS4 so I can play more Digimon. Question number 19. What is your favorite Digimon song? Oh my god, I already rumbled a bit about how much I love music in Digimon, the original Japanese soundtrack that is. My favorite song from the whole series I think is Braveheart, the Digivolution theme from Digimon Adventure. I think Braveheart is connected to so many really intense moments in the show. There are literally times where you hear this first Digivice sound and there was notes on the piano and it brings such emotional overdose. <laughs> Shinka! 
this song is connected to empowerment in my mind, is connected to reaching deep into you to find something that will pull you through a difficult situation. And I think that that's why it's my favorite Digimon song. It's good to mention that everything Koji Wada has sung has also been really important to me through the years. <laughs> I'm in love with Digimon music. I own a few soundtracks on CD. When I went to Japan, I grabbed a few of them. Yeah, being a musical being, um, this part of the show was always very deeply connected to me. And we're down to the final question. So, question number 20. Have you ever visited any Digimon locations in real life? If not, would you like to? Okay, for me, as a child, Digimon were kind of the first exposure to Tokyo locations, I guess, because being a child in Greece, I wasn't really educated in foreign countries, capital cities, locations at that age, and it was the first time I heard names like Shibuya and Shinjuku and uh, the Tokyo Tower and all these places in Tokyo that are very, very important, like main central places, but I wasn't aware of them before I watched Digimon at the age of 10. So... For that reason, going to Japan and seeing these places in real life had an extra magical meaning for me because I wanted to visit the places I used to see in Digimon <laughs> all the time. And so when I went to Japan in 2016, I did visit a lot of these places. I made sure to go to Hikarigaoka, which is like one of the main areas that is mentioned in Digimon Adventure, which is kind of a residential area, really. There's nothing special about it. There is a Digimon sign outside Hikarigaoka station, which is amazing. We tried to find it. My lovely friend Julia asked one of the people on the tube station if he knew where this Digimon sign was, and she found it very embarrassing, but she did it for me in Japanese, and I'm so thankful. At the end, we found it, and we took pictures, and I was really emotional over it and stuff. So, of course, I went to Shibuya and also in my Shibuya performance, because we played two gigs in Japan, I sang Butterfly by Koji Wada as the last song to the mini acoustic tour. And it was so important to me that I was singing Butterfly from Digimon in Shibuya, like in a venue that was located in Shibuya, but nobody knew how much that meant to me while I was doing that. We went to Tokyo Tower, we went to Shinjuku, obviously, and of course we went to Odaiba, which was the number one Digimon place I wanted to visit. We spent an evening in Odaiba and we went up the first wheel and it was all very magical and I didn't want to leave ever. I want to go back to Odaiba as soon as I can. The Fuji TV building is so iconic to me and it was amazing to go and see these places. So I'm wondering if other Digimon fans also feel this connection to these places, even though you know, you only see it in your favorite show, but still, it's kind of an important thing, somehow. Right, so that was it for the Digimon tag. Thank you for sitting through my Digimon rambling. Uh, <laughs> I have spent so many years of my life loving this show and being connected to it in a special way, so I'm very happy to share this finally with you. If you are also a Digimon fan and you are up for uploading stuff on YouTube and you come across this video, I am tagging you. Please do this tag. I'm gonna leave the questions as I have used them in the description below, so you can go ahead and do it yourself. But yes, please, please do it. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching this Digimon tag, and I'm looking forward to have you back. Take care, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.